Hi everybody, Rob Redman here from Prior Studios. Now recently I did a tutorial on using Fusion to introduce some text into a scene. Uh, and I had a few comments on that asking to show you how to do tracking. So in this video we're going to take a look at tracking something in some footage um, and replacing it with an image or an animation, something along those lines. It doesn't have to be, it could be a 3D object. Uh, it can be whatever you like. So let's dive straight in and we'll bring in first of all the footage that we want to track so i have this footage which i recorded um, just with my iphone on the way to the shop um, just to get some food so we'll bring that in just by dropping it from uh, you can use a, a browser window just to, to bring that in drag it into viewer one and i'll just play through this footage so you can see it um, very simple uh, it's just a big bit of signage on the side of a building um, and I chose this sign in particular just because it'd be easier for us to understand what we're looking at because there's a decent amount of contrast between the the, the corners of the the sign um, and the the brick wall it's actually attached to okay so and that was the full size so this is I pressed fit just to make sure you could see the whole footage now in a future video um, I'm going to do a full visual effect shot with you um, and we will actually replace this sign with more brick wall so it looks like a completely flat brick wall but we will still use the tracking information um, to stick a new piece of signage here which actually could be slightly further away from the wall like a kind of projected holographic signage um, which we will create within fusion as well uh, and we could do sky replacement i might add some rain and some neon lights and all that kind of jazz uh, just to show you kind of a, a full pipeline just to, to show you a few different things all within one scene and how you can kind of create various workflows and then join them together color correct them all together to make them kind of feel cohesive and but for now we'll start off simply and I'm going to show you how to track the information within this footage and, and replace this sign with something different okay so we have this footage I need to right click uh, let's just find somewhere higher up so you can see it in the menu add tool and hopefully you can just about see this tracking tracker and I'm going to connect up my node let's just put them next to each other dump that on there and I'll put the tracker in the right hand window and they'll look the same but it means that uh, I can just kind of zoom into one and have an overview of the other so what we have here is these tracking points so you can see here as I hover over it hopefully you can see that let's zoom in um, just in case you can't um, so I'm just using middle mouse button to navigate around and within this central box which is the kind of the pattern area and this, so this is the area that we're, we're, we're using to define what the tracker is looking at and this outer box is kind of the, the movement area so this is the catchment area so with, if within a frame what is in here moves within this outer frame then it will track it um, and that's how you can kind of work out how big these areas should be Anyway, so within this central section, there's a, a at the top left is a little square. If you click on that, you get to zoom in and then you can drag that center point onto the kind of highest contrast and most sensible place, which is obviously that top left part of the, the, the signage. Now you can track with one point, but you can also track with multiple points. So if we come over here and add a tracking point, we have another one top left, oh, sorry, top right. Uh, which we can drag on like so. Now I'm just going to move over to my zoomed in view just so I can be a little bit more precise. That's okay. I'm going to add another one. So add a third tracker, which you can see is down here. Let's drag that over and just line that up. That's actually not bad at all. Uh, that's fine. And then we'll add one more. So basically we're defining the corners of this rectangle. And because we're going to replace this with a, a similarly shaped and proportioned image, uh, this is what we want to do. So we have these four points. Let's go ah, now. So you can track backwards and then track forwards again. I'm doing this on frame 33, so I'm going to need track backwards. So I'm going to hit this button here, which is the track backwards button. This shouldn't take too long. And you can see what's going on here in this right hand window um, you should be able to see what's going on now 
don't be put off by the fact that in this left viewer window, these tracking points are all moving around. Um, that's purely because this window is only looking at the original footage node. It's not taking into consideration the tracking points. They're only being like kind of live in this image here on the right. So it shouldn't take too long. Um, while that's doing that, let's see if I can bring in another image while it's tracking. It might let me, it might not. I think it will. Uh, yes. Ah, it stopped the tracker, uh, which is what that information was showing me then. Um, so let's go back. We'll go back. To, we'll start just tracking back again. Right. Now, I've confused it. So I'm going to stop that there. I'm going to go back to the beginning of my footage. This is what happens when you're impatient. Um, so I, let's just take all these trackers and I'm just going to delete them. So tracker one. I need to go to my timeline and I just need to take all this tracking information and I'm just going to delete all of those. Uh, so let's select all and we'll delete them. There we go. Tracker one should now all be clear. So we can go back to the flow and now I can bring this down, bring it back to where I want it. I can add another one. Now I could have edited this, edited this out of the video, but I kind of wanted you to see um, that sometimes you can be too impatient and mess things up. I'm going to add another one, which will be my bottom left. There we go. And actually, it doesn't take too long to fix, uh, to put everything back to where it should be. Okay, so I have my four tracking points, uh, or one, five, six, and seven, as you can see, because it numbers them as they were added to the scene, even if you've deleted some. Now I'm doing this on frame zero, so I can go track forward, which is that button there. And now we should find that this is all tracked to perfection. Um, and this will probably take maybe 20 seconds or so. So we'll just sit and let it go. Okay, so that's finished and actually wasn't too bad. What was that, 25 seconds? Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm just going to play through um, and I'm going to just click this. So I've put the tracker into both windows now. So this left-hand viewer is just a zoomed in duplicate of this. So we go back to zero, press play, make sure the points are fine. Now, the newly added points are fine but that first point, the first track of the top left one, isn't sticking. So we need to go back to the beginning and we need to fix this one or replace it. So really for our needs, I think we'll probably just replace it. So I'm gonna delete that one and we'll just turn off these three. We don't need to overwrite those at all. I'm going to add one and this one I'm going to just take back up to that first position which is there and I'll track that one forward this will be quick because it's only tracking one point not all four okay now if I turn them back on so we have all of them we should find that all four are now stuck that's looking pretty good Okay, so that's looking cool. Um, and now it's real, really, really simple. So what you might think is you might have to take this information, merge it with this image that we want to use, which I'll just show you is just this photo. Uh, it's quite a high resolution photo. Um, it doesn't matter. It'll just mean that we get weird bits of flickering with the aliasing um, of the pixels. But we can take this, pop it onto here, and you can see nothing has happened. Now, the reason for that is we need to tell the tracker what we're actually trying to do. And because we're replacing something, um, we could do a match move um, or we could play with the 
perspective if we're trying to match some 3D objects in. We're going to do corner positioning. Now, as soon as I click this button, it's going to take this image and it's going to take the corners and pin them to this. When I say that, that's, uh, that's what's supposed to happen. Now, why hasn't that worked? I wonder. Now, you can see what we've got. Where I had the tracking points, um, they and I added more, let's go back to trackers. You can see I've actually got five, six, seven, and eight. Now, six, seven, and eight were six, uh, seven, and eight. And number five, the newest one, or no, sorry, this should be five, six, and seven. Number eight is this top left. So when we go back to our operator, we'll have to try and remember this. So we've got five, six, seven, and eight. So top left is number eight, because that's the newest one. There you go, look. You can already see what's going on here. So top right was number five. And then we have number six and number seven. So just remember this. Normally, if you get it right first time and you have tracker point one, two, three, four, you click corner positioning and then it will be in place. It will be snapped perfectly exactly where you want it. Um, but, you know, that was my fault for being silly. Now, I'm going to take this justice image, which is the, the replacement photo, and I'm going to add a mask to it. Um, and you can see the mask has strangely attached to my footage, even though I had that selected. So I'm just going to detach that, plug it into my image. And what I want to do is I just want to make a slightly soft edge. It doesn't have to be super crazy like that. It can just be a tiny amount. Um, and we will just fix the sizing of it. And the reason I'm doing this is so that we can see uh, if I take my tracker, let's just go to about there. Um, and we take the tracker, pop that back on. Let's go to say 200% and just look at the corners here. So you can see I've got a very soft border. Um, what I want to do is just use this to check through so that when I press play, if I see this white line increasing in size or decreasing in size, um, it will show me where I need to fix anything. Now, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think this is tracked really well. And that's because of the contrast between the sign and the, the surrounding wall. So just press play. There you go. That's pretty perfect. So when we go on and we do the, the slightly more complex scene, the full visual effects scene, um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do sky replacements. Um, we'll mask off. We'll do some maybe remove the wires. I can show you how to do that. Um, and then we can go on and do some color correction. And that doesn't need any special merging. You can take this tracker node and treat it as simple footage. I'll just show you quickly what I mean. So we can go to, uh, let's just do a color corrector. Let's hook that up. That's a normal output, an image output. So I could take my shadows and I could, you know, make them kind of a teal. That's probably quite strong, but I'll be over the top just to show you. So I'm going to take tracker, put it in there, and we'll just go fit. And I'll take my color corrector, put it in there, just go fit. Um, so you can see I was I was right, that was quite strong. Uh, I could take my highlights and warm them up. Um, and maybe my midtones could just be a bit warmer. Uh, and this is, you know, this is just me playing to show you. Um, I really wanted to just show you that this tracker is a, a normal kind of image or animation or, you know, uh, frame sequence output that you can then take back into your project and do anything with. So I've been Rob Edmund. I hope this has helped you somewhat um, and giving you a little introduction into what you can do with the tracker. Really good for if you're on location and you're filming and you, you've had you know some billboard or some advertising hoardings that either A, you don't want in the scene, B, aren't right for your narrative, um, or C, maybe you don't have the copyright to show within your footage, then you can very quickly and very easily replace them with something that you do either own or want there. 
so like I say, I'll record some footage um, and we'll do a decent full-on visual effects shot at some point in the, in the near future. If there's anything you'd like to, me to see or you'd like to see me do in there, anything you'd like to learn, then leave a comment below and uh, I'll get straight on it. And we'll probably include some Cinema 4D uh, in that and we'll do you know a full round trip of 3D um, externally made and brought into Fusion and composited with all these tools. So thanks very much and I'll see you all again soon.